Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the monotone convergence theorem for sequences. We say that a sequence is monotone if the sequence is either increasing or decreasing. or decreasing. So of course, what does increasing mean? Increasing simply means that if your sequence is an, that an is less than or equal to an plus 1 for every n, for all n. The sequence decreasing means that an plus 1 is less than or equal to an for all n. Easy enough idea. Now we can set the monotone convergence theorem. The monotone convergence theorem states the following. It states, and I'll just, let's just state it for increasing the same results true for decreasing. Given an increasing, monotone increasing, sequence a n that is bounded, so it needs to be monotone increasing. These are the two conditions we need, monotone increasing and bounded then a n converges. It's convergent. Okay. And that should make intuitive sense, too. If we have a sequence that's increasing, but can never reach a certain point, bounded point, that sequence sort of crashes into that sort of upper limit point, whatever that happens to be. And so we're going to use some of our foundational tools about real numbers from our course and the construction of the real numbers. And what we'll do is we'll say proof since a n is bounded, its supremum exists. So let's set A to be the supremum n bigger than or equal to 1 of the collection A n. Now we're going to show that our sequence A n converges to A. All right, so let's do so. So now, by the approximation property, by supremum approximation, before we do it, we should say let, let's let epsilon be greater than 0. Let epsilon be greater than 0. That's always our standard initial statement for these proofs. So since epsilon is greater than 0 by supremum approximation, there is an n. such that what? Such that the supremum minus epsilon is less than or equal to a n, and that's less than or equal to a. And of course, we can make this a strict inequality. That's my force of habit. There we go. Beautiful. OK, well now, since a n is monotone, we know that a n is less than or equal to a little n if a n, if n is bigger than or equal to, so if n is bigger than or equal to n capital, if n is bigger than or equal to n capital. And so now what does this imply? This implies, therefore, a minus epsilon is less than a little n, which is less than or equal to a, which is strictly less than a plus epsilon. And so this condition over here, of course, is valid if n is bigger than or equal to n capital. I can rewrite this as saying what? As absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon if n is bigger than or equal to n capital. And that proves our result. That monotone increasing and bounded implies what? Implies that you're going to converge to um, the supremum. In the case of a decreasing sequence, you're, all you're going to change is you're going to change the supremum to infimum and just reverse the sequence. So you can always just reverse and flip and make it the same result. 
Now, a nice consequence of this is sort of a tr uh, something we are already know very well is the following. If you have this sequence, if the modulus of a is less than 1, then what? Then um, a to the power n converges to 0. So we get a, sort of a very, very quick application of this. Well, we know that if a is less than 1 in absolute value, then I know that a to the n plus 1, which is going to be a times a to the n plus a to the n is what? a times a to the n is going to be strictly less than what? Strictly less than a to the n. And so what we have here is we have a decreasing sequence, and the decreasing sequence converges to what? It's going to converge to its infimum. So in particular, if we let n go to infinity, what we'll have over here is we'll have these sequences will converge to the same thing. So this relationship that modulus a n plus 1 is equal to a times modulus a bar n, as n goes to infinity, whatever the limit is, which we know exists, the infimum, will go to l, and that's equal to modulus a times l. And the only way that happens is if l is equal to 0. So this identity over here implies that l is equal to 0. So the limit of this sequence is, in fact, 0. So the monotone conversion theorem gives us a really quick proof of the fact that, the, that a to the power n tends to 0 if the modulus of a is less than 1. Thank you very much.